and today we are going to be having a lot of fun because we're going to be doing carving, we're going to do epoxy inlay, and we are actually going to be making emblems that go on a car. So if you've ever seen like the, the logo for a company, we're going to be making one of those that go on there out of wood. So this should be a, a fun one. Now this is also a collaboration with uh, Brandon from Octane Monkey. Uh, he has a channel about automotive features and cars and things of that nature. And one well, Blue Lagoon, you are my new favorite person twice. No. Not for you. Oh, you're Sarah's favorite person. Oh, that's not nice. That's not nice. That's <laughs> not the right. So I welcome, welcome to the fun of the live. We're going to be experimenting tonight. Um, in, don't worry, One Blue Lagoon, I will give you your dad joke in just a little bit here. And that is the way we roll. If you do a super chat, you get a dad joke. Um, <laughs> punishment for super chats, I guess. Um now we're going to do, oh yes, we're, we're doing a, a collaboration here. So um, tonight um, I have Brandon here in the chat, so uh, you can say hi. And Sarah, you can throw his image up there. And uh, why don't you actually tell everyone about your channel and what you have going on? Sure. Um, can everyone see me? I don't have the window with the chat open the way I have it set up. But anyway, hi everybody. I'm Brandon. I run Octane Monkey, and we do car stuff for the most part. Um, it's a little bit of DIY. Um, a little bit of fixing, a little bit of racing. Um, we do interesting car reviews on oddball cars. And yeah, that's that's it for the most part. Um, me and James got hooked up and he is doing me a huge favor. And thank you guys for, for entertaining him and watching him um, put together these emblems for my car. I'm, I'm super excited to, uh, to see how they turn out. Um, yeah, I'm a I'm a designer by by day job, so it's kind of fun seeing your logo. Um, you know, I've got it on some clothing and stuff, but it's cool to see it uh, taking shape in in wood and uh, in other medium forms. So anyway, I'll let you uh, take it away. I can't hear him. So oh, yeah. ha, ha. <laughs> this is power. Yeah, you got the headphones on. I don't have the headphones. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah so definitely go take a look at his channel. I'll leave a link to that down below. Um, this is one of the things that I want to try and do occasionally with the lives and help out other channels around, um, other people who I've found. And I was actually watching some of his videos. And uh, one of my big dreams is one of these days I want to buy a Viper. And he showed how there's the what is it, the, um, the the Viper truck. And so they actually put the engine in the truck and they made a truck into a Viper, basically. So it's like, ooh, I want that. And the price range is a lot better than a than a Viper. So um, thanks for sharing that. <laughs> Don't tell my wife, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> so let me get back to this. We do have a few things coming up. Um, Sarah and I, well, no, I, actually, we just found out Sarah will not be able to go down to the national meet. Oh, I was um, like, I'm going to London. Yeah, the MWTCA uh, meet in uh, Peoria, Illinois is coming up in June, and I will be there Thursday and Friday. I will not be able to be there Saturday. Uh, but I will be doing a talk on Saturday. So if you want to come and see, probably going to be taking my bench and a bunch of my tools. You can come and hang out and do that. Um, you can go see the MWTCA meet for that. Um, and then uh, we will both be in London in two weeks. Oh. What? One Blue Lagoon is back. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you are awesome. Um, you. <laughs> uh, we will be in London in two weeks, and um, we will be um, at the Makers Central. And so if you want, are going to be coming to that, look for us around, and you get to meet me and my wife there. Um, oh, yes, One Blue Lagoon, you have earned... Um, or you are now going to be punished with a dad joke. So we have here, what is the difference between a, a poorly dressed man on a tricycle and a well-dressed man on a bicycle? Attire. It's really funny hearing somebody else giggle at your joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, here then, uh, since you've, you've done two here, um, February, March, no, but April, May. <laughs> <laughs> That's as bad as the 789 joke. <laughs> okay, let's actually get into some woodworking and see what we're doing here since we've been having so much fun. Um, we are actually working and we're, we're going to be making. Audio. Okay, so I was What's thinking that? the audio seemed out of sync with you too. Is it out of sync with my lips? It may be because I'm, I'm trying to stream through Hangouts, um, so I haven't put a, a sync in that. So sorry if it's out of sync. I'll oh, try and fix it next time. The more you talk, the worse it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here, let me do this. Uh, if I if I go to this one, 
Oh, oops, wrong button. Let's do this one. Uh, let's do this one. There. Now my mouth is not in sync, not out of sync anymore. <laughs> so um, this one. On his car, he has. Um, Wait, hang on. What's that? Uh, yeah, this one. Yeah. There. Now my mouth is not in sync. It's not out of sync anymore. <laughs> There's like a huge so, delay. Uh, on his car, and but he's in the audio. Oh, between you and him. Well, between what you just said and what I'm hearing now. Oh, oh you're, you're, you're hearing it back through his thing. So oh, I don't, don't yeah. worry about the delay between. I'm gonna step oh, away for 30 oh, seconds. I'm gonna put headphones on. <laughs> yeah, Brandon, if you put oh, headphones on, then Sarah won't you. hear it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so lost. Um, okay, so he has on his car. He has the uh, BMW Circle logo on the front and back. And so we're actually going to be making replacement ones that have the Octane Monkey logo in them. And I'm going back and forth with how to make these. And I came across uh, this is. Philip, uh, what do they call it? Um, Filipino mahogany. Um, it's a very soft wood, but it is very water resistant and it's often used in boats. Um, and so we're gonna be doing some carving in there and actually putting his logo into the epoxy. So let me switch this over. Ooh. This is what we have. And I did most of this one last night so that we can kind of get an idea of what we're gonna do, but we're gonna do another one over here. And then once we get the epoxy in, then we can do the next couple steps on this one. So hopefully we're gonna get through this tonight. So the first thing I have in here is I have a circle that I drew out with a compass. So he gave me the measurement on this one is 80 millimeters. So I set this on there, traced out 80 millimeter wide stencil. And then I printed off a logo so it fits just inside of the range here. And we're gonna be using a glue stick. So regular, okay. good old glue. What? So because you moved the boxes, um, I we don't see half your what you're doing. Oh, my over. Sorry, I don't know. Maybe they can see it, but no, I, I just gotta move that. It. Okay, I had the uh, camera pointing in the wrong Alan direction. Sorry, says, need better dad jokes, James. And then <laughs> he's supplying me my weekly hot chocolate fix. <laughs> How do trees get online? They just log in. <laughs> Does he get it? Does he get it? Oh, he did a dad joke. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay, well, he did a super chat. Well, let's try this then. Um, I don't play soccer because I don't enjoy the sport. I'm just doing it for kicks. <laughs> I think I said that one wrong. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's get back to this. So we stuck this down with some glue. And now we're actually going to carve it out. And there's a bunch of different ways I could do this. Number one, I can come in here. Let me actually zoom in on this one a little bit more. Right here. There we go. I can come in with this and put you back into focus. And I can outline in with a knife the very edge of everything around. Be fun. <laughs> and I can go all the way around in here and cut down in. Problem with it is that takes a lot of time and a knife is a little bit less accurate. Whereas I could come in here with a V tool and cut this out. Oop, the paper just didn't glue down all the way. Probably gonna be running into that because I didn't glue the paper down ahead of time. So on some of these, I might come in and just trace them out so that the paper stays in place. Um, you wanna hear a joke about paper? Like normally I let this sit oh, for oh, five, hey. six minutes and oh. then it comes in. Yes, please, Brandon. What's that? He's Never mind, it's one. terrible. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it on both ends now. <laughs> I, <laughs> you can't escape. <laughs> this is actually just the roast James hour, so we're <laughs> free at any time to jump in. <laughs> I could come in and use a mallet to do the carving which I may end up moving to here in a little bit. The problem with doing it all by hand like that oop, is when you slide like that, and I slipped a little bit past. Thankfully, I didn't slide past my line just to the cut. And so I'm going to be outlining this with the V-tools. I'm going to use the side of the knife to cut down in. And if my camera isn't quite close enough, I might try and move it a little bit closer for you. But this just takes a little bit of time going around all of these sides. And I'm gonna do all of the red tonight, and then the black I'm gonna do later. So I'll do these in two different stages so that they don't bleed into each other. Because if I'm put doing epoxy down, the one epoxy will then bleed into the other epoxy. 
But we're just going to go around all of these and do the outlining of all these lines. So Tim BBQ wants to know, are you cutting up against the grain? I'm cutting with and against the grain. That's one of the interesting things about a V-tool. A V-tool, because it has the two fins on it, one is always cutting against the grain and one is always cutting with the grain. Um, so you're never really doing one with the grain and one against, you're never cutting with the grain or against the grain, you're always cutting with both. And so that's why I'm never quite worrying about um, switching directions. I'm just doing whichever direction is comfortable because it doesn't matter which direction I go, I'm always going to be cutting against the grain and with the grain at the same time. Um, um, there's a yeah. question. What's that? Uh, can, can you guys hear me? Like, can Alan Smith, can you hear me? Um, so the story behind the Octane Monkey logo. Can I switch to Brandon for a second? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Am I on? OK. Yeah. So the story behind the Octane Monkey logo is a mix of the of Grease Monkey and um, sort of um, like petrol. I was thinking of another name for sort of petrol, so like octane. Um, so that's kind of where the monkey end of it came from. And then from a logo point of view, I just wanted something kind of fun and simple, and um, that everyone. It's kind. Of, it's, it's supposed to be family friendly, so wanted a kind of happy, smiley monkey, and uh, I've got some glasses on, looking looking cool, or at least trying to. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's kind of the the story. There's not a, a there's not a, a major story. I didn't uh, have a run in with a monkey that scarred my childhood or anything like that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm I'm very happy with the logo. I I really like it. Um, so anyway, but yeah, good, great question, Alan. Thanks for sharing. All right. Back to your regularly scheduled broadcast. <laughs> so Richard Wright asks, can you recommend a font for beginner carvers? <laughs> um, no, I don't really know of any one font that's better than another. Uh, straight lines are always easier than rounded curves. So look for that. Um, I, I really like Times New Roman. The serifs in those really make them fairly easy to cut. Um, but that's just a personal preference. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's any particular one font I would suggest, but uh, yeah, I might have to play with it. That'd actually make a good video on doing some carving with fonts. Thank you for the idea. Um, so let's actually, uh, oh, I know I got to do a couple more lines here. I still got to do a little line right here across the bottom because he's got a chin outline. If I don't have that in there, then it just doesn't look like a monkey. Um, now, what I want to do here, because I'm cutting just a simple line and we're really filling this in, I want to make sure that I'm at the same depth because the depth of this cut determines how wide the cut is and that determines how the line is. If I don't make it the same cut all the way across, the line looks like it gets fatter and thinner and fatter and thinner as it goes along. Let me see if I can get this a little closer for you. No, that's about as close as I can get, sorry. Look right there. Um, oh, you got to do the mouth here. So this one, I'm just going to start here. I'm going to plunge in, run along it, and I'm going to stop here because it looks better if you plunge in from the other side and you come back to it. And I'm cutting left hand at the moment because the camera's in the way. Uh, and then we need to remove the material in. So I've outlined all the way around. And this knife, this one here actually has, let me see if I can focus in on that. This one is a veining tool. So it's like a gouge, but it has steep walls on it. And this will allow me to get down in there and remove more material. Oop, there we go. So I can take this in and remove material in between. Any questions now? Uh, yes. Uh, let's see. Ken Ward from Saturday's Woodshop says, does James have a video on sharpening a V-tool and gouge? Yes, I do. You have a couple. Yes, I think I have a live video on how to sharpen everything, which I cover those in. I have, a I have a video on how to sharpen gouges. I have a video on how to sharpen carving tools. Uh, if you're ever wondering if I have a video, all you have to do is search in the search bar, wood by right, and then whatever your topic is. So wood by right, how to sharpen a V-tool. 
and you'll come up with that video. So use word by right in the search. Now the bottom of this is going to be uneven. And that's not a problem because the, the epoxy I'm using is opaque. Um, if it were a problem, then what I can do is put this on its side and use the straight edge. And in this case, I'll show that using the straight edge of the V tool. And I can use that to pair out the bottom here and clean it all out. But I don't have to worry about that because we're going to be filling this with epoxy. Oop, I gotta do the ears too. So let's clean these out. And then I'm gonna show you how to do the nose. For the glasses, because uh, I'm not gonna do those right now, I'm gonna do those later once this epoxy run has cured. I'm gonna basically do the exact same thing, but because they're eyes, I'm just gonna outline them as you can see on this one. I just outlined them because there isn't a slightly less gray to fill in the eyes. So sorry, Brandon, your logo is going to be a little different, but I don't think most people would ever notice that. They still look like glasses. Although they're not as cool because they're not sunglasses now. They're wire rim, wire rim glasses. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to try doing this with a V-tool here because I'm doing more cross grain. My V-tool is a little bit keener. Cool. Any other questions? Um. Well, Digimer says they have an unrelated question. What's Do that? you have an opinion on wood bathtubs? Wood Do you bathtubs? ever make one? And if so, what would you, would you use? Um, I have wanted to make a wooden hot tub, actually. That is on my list for someday. Um, the wood I would use is a cedar. It is very water resistant. Um, but... Oh, there are a bunch froze. of other ones. I, I would also do white oak. I just have to be careful. What's your that? Video froze. Oh, this one froze. Oop, I gotta go switch it. Just a moment, folks. Oh, the fun of cheap equipment. Watch this. You're gonna see some lions here. Oh no, we've lost connectivity. That again. Hey, we're back. <laughs> So let's get back to this carving here. Almost done with the ear here, and then we're going to make some epoxy mixed up. And for the epoxy, I'm going to be using um, West Systems <laughs> Fast. Your brother just sent a dad joke via messenger. My brother? <laughs> yeah. No, what other brother do you have? Oh, I wasn't sure if you were talking to someone else in the brand. What is it? Uh, Jason says, I tell you about my construction joke, but I'm still working on it. <laughs> Uh, what am I going to do with him? <laughs> I really need to bring him on here for one of these lives sometime. My brother actually does uh, voiceover. He's a voice actor for his job and uh, does some really fun things. We did him, we had him on um, the podcast a while back. Now, the nice thing about doing epoxy fill in is that this isn't looking great down inside, but as long as my lines, my edges are sharp. That's all that matters. So I'm just going to be going around this and I'm going to make sure that the outside edge all the way around is nice and sharp. I think we're ready. Next thing I want to do is put the nose in. So I'm just going to grab a bit here. And I'm not even going to put it in the drill. I'm just going to set it in here and crank down. As long as this bit is sharp, that's all I need. Is just go down an eighth inch or so. And then on this one an eighth inch or so. And then when I come to doing the glasses, I'm going to do the same thing with the eye. Only it's going to be a slightly larger bit. I guess if I had time, I probably would have chucked this up in a drill for two little holes that only have to go down a tiny little bit. That's all we need. So, um, any questions before I set this up? Um, oh, grab it. Well, Richard Wright asks, is it safe to use a V-tool for ears? To use a what? A V-tool for ears. <laughs> so, you know, there's that. I always use a V-tool on my ears. That's how I keep I them like... so hair-free. <laughs> uh, oh, I got the... Why is that one? Okay, okay. Uh, so for the epoxy, I'm actually going to be using uh, West System Fast. And I'm using this because I have it. And I like the Fast epoxy. It's fairly straightforward. One pump from either cup. And then I have this die kit that I got. And 
there's some random company and they came with a box and these are all the colors for the month the years of the month colors uh, but it was a nice collection of them it comes with this black that is really wait no i don't want to use black i want to use red it comes with a red that's really um the right color <laughs> <laughs> the brand police on me what's that and i want it to be a fairly <laughs> solid <laughs> red colors they're on so i'm going to use a large chunk and this dye isn't quite as good so that's actually a lot for this pump but for this cheap stuff you need to use a good bit more in order to get that iridescent look and once this all gets shined up it will actually be um, almost a metallic speckle to it when you get close to it so it should match any uh, paint job when you really when you get a new paint job and has that metallic shine to it we're looking for now before i apply this i'm going to cut it off because i'm going to be working with this other one over here i'm going to put this in the vise slice it down my saw any questions so s richie has a unrelated to the carving so they recently had a vintage stanley 78 with all the parts and everything's in good condition a little the panning had chip and i was wondering what it might be worth um a 78 with all the parts 78 is i don't remember what a stanley 78 is um let me know what the 78 is. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not very good at remembering all of the Stanley numbers as much as I'd like to. Plus you're dyslexic, um, so. Yeah, I, I think the 78 is the shoulder plane, but I can't remember. Yeah, remind me what it was, and I'll, I'll get you on that. Uh, switch you back over to two. Okay, we are on. Rabbit plane? Ah, the rabbit plane, yes. Um, if you have all the parts and the box in good condition, you might get uh, 80 to 100 is pretty normal for a tool meet on eBay, maybe 120. Um, so it's a it's, it's not a really common tool. Um, if you have it with all the parts without the box, it's eh, pretty close to the same. The box doesn't add that much for that one because the boxes are actually fairly common. But with all the parts... Um, it's a good good deal. So now we're going to work this into all the spaces. And what I want to do is make sure that I actually work it in. I want to make contact with all the fibers underneath. Oh, you got to talk like, oh, you're so beautiful. We're going to make you look beautiful here. <laughs> make all the male monkeys go, <laughs> If you get that movie reference, you've made my wife's day. <laughs> so if you think you know that movie... And I do a horrible French accent, so sorry everyone going to listen to that. And most of this isn't that much of an issue. I just want to make sure, like, these thin lines, I don't want it to run on top. And so I'm going to just work it in all the way down until we get over here at the nose. Put a little bit on there just to get that started. And I'm not going to put it over. I'm just going to let it sit around the nose. And so once this I sets, it was <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> once this sets, I will come back in and carve out the glasses and do the same thing on those. And then um, I'll fill in the glasses and then we can take a card scraper and smooth it down. I'm showing you that. I have this little scrap of wood that I chipped off and I want to use this to work the epoxy down into those holes. I don't want any bubbles in the holes. Otherwise, when I scrape it off, you get a bubble and you get no epoxy. So just take a little scrap of this. So would that be a snot bubble? <laughs> Maybe. And there we go. Then I just want to go around the line, make sure that everything is in these thin spaces. And then we can set this aside. Then tomorrow I'll come back and I'll carve out the eyes. So let's bring it back to where it is a couple days later. Hey, look at that. Wow, I'm good. <laughs> Let me move this over to here. Make sure I kick that around. And now we can smooth this out. Now, I did most of the smoothing out on this ahead of time. If I thought about it, I would have waited until afterwards, but I was really getting excited about it. So I just grab a card scraper. And so then you can see on here, 
There's still paper, there's epoxy, the epoxy is up higher. And a card scraper is fantastic for epoxy because number one, I can come in here and I can detail out. I just want to scrape out this area and I can get it down to a fairly nice smooth surface. Or I can take the card scraper and I can run across the whole thing. And I, the card scraper is really great, really good for working out epoxy. Cleans it up <laughs> nicely. Um, when I did my table and I buffed it all out, I hit it with the card scraper and then I got some, um, uh, what's it called, headlight polish. Um, so that the same stuff you use for polishing up the headlights on cars, I use that to buff out the epoxy and to get a perfectly cl glass clear smooth surface. So uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to cut around this and start making this into an emblem. And this is about three-eighths of an inch thick. Um, in the end, it's probably going to come out to about a quarter inch thick. So I'm going to get out my bird's mouth. And all this is is an elevated platform so that I can use my... Um, my coping saw. Now I could grab my foot powered scroll saw, but where's the fun in that? So I'm just going to grab a coping saw here. Let's see if I can get this camera up high enough to shoot this without disconnecting it. Hey, look at that. There we go. So now I can switch over to this camera. Any questions while I'm setting this up? Um, I don't know if it's Tijin or TJJN06. So does James have any suggestions for beginners carving sets? Um, yes, actually I have a set that I list on my website. So if you go to woodbywrite.com backslash tools, I think it is, I list tools that I recommend. And one of those is carving, carving tools under chisels. And so this bird's mouth lifts it up so it's a comfortable height for working at. And I'm going to stay a little ways away from the line as I go all the way around. I doubt you guys can see the line except for where the epoxy runs into it. Here, let me switch over to one so you can actually see the height that I'm working at. And so this is you know, a little bit below shoulder height. It's where my hand is comfortable being up and down. It makes it relatively easy to just march around this thing. Almost there. I'll switch it for the end just a second. Two. There we go. There. So we cut all around. Any questions while I'm setting this next step up? So Mason Simpson just asked, I want to make spoons from green wood, but don't want them to split while driving. Drying. What's the best way to dry green spoons? Um, I actually like to put them in a paper bag with their own shavings so that the shavings all slow and the paper bag slows down the actual um, drying time. The slower you get the drying time, the less chance of cracking. But most of the time, as long as there is no pith in the spoon, uh, they shouldn't crack. Uh, they'll, they'll warp and deform, but they won't crack. At least they shouldn't. Um, if you have pith running through the spoon, in other words, the core of the tree, then you're gonna get cracks. Um, if you have pith running through it, cracks are just inevitable. So, but yeah, most of the time it's just finding a way to slow down the drying. So I like to put it in a paper bag with other wood shavings and let it sit in that for six months or so and it'll just really slow it down. Um, the other thing you can do is do a really fast cure. Um, so put them in the oven at like 250 degrees. You want to get it above boiling point and boil all the water out of it instantly. Um, do that for an hour or two and it will be dry as a bone and uh, sometimes that works well, and sometimes it really doesn't. So it's a little, little bit of a gamble, but a lot of people like to do that. So um, let's make this thing a perfect circle. Oops. Change the camera again. Let me zoom in on that. Uh, wow, having issues here. Exit. There we go. Focus. Haha. -ha. Now we can try this. So I've got it in the vise, and I'm going to come in here with a file. I'm going to use the file to 
take it back to the circle line that I have on it and run this around it. Now, one of the big questions that people are going to ask is this will be outside on the hood of a car. How are you going to finish this? And I'm going to say boiled linseed oil and paste wax. That's all you ever need, right? No. <laughs> boiled linseed oil is not a great exterior finish. Uh, it is not a protective finish. And so if I want this to look good on a car, that is not what I'm going to do. Uh, now here you'll notice I'm going this way around it because the grain right now is running up and, way, up and down. I'm going to go this way around it. But when I get to this point, I actually want to stop and turn this around so that I can go with the grain again on this side. And so I'm going to start down here and just file this in all the way around. And I'm looking at my line here, making sure I get close to that. And I'm going to do that all the way around. Now I've got this, this puck that's rounded, and I'll do more a little bit later. we got uh, 37 minutes. Okay, so we're doing pretty good. Um, and now actually what I want to do is round the outside corners. So for that, actually I'm going to use the same file. This is a fairly soft wood. I'm going to put the file into the bench, put the other half into my gut, and then I'm going to use this to round over the corner. And it's amazing what you can do with a file. And so I'm starting it down low and then I'm going to slowly bring it up. And move around this way. So I'll start here and I'll slowly bring it up and round off that outside corner. And then I'll do the same thing with the front corner. I'm not going to make it quite as much on this one. Oop, wrong direction. You have to go this way with it, yeah. I have a feeling we have a... And so we'll be getting a, a slightly rounded edge uh, like that on there. Not looking for much, but just enough to clean this up. Do um, you have a question before I switch it over? Well, I think Brad had, Brad's workbench has a joke for you. What's that? It says, what does a guy with two left feet wear to the beach? What? I don't know. I don't have an answer yet. <laughs> <laughs> what, Brad? What does he wear to the beach? Now, for finish on this, because I'm not going to get it fully finished. Um, I, before I actually want to finish this, I want to. Um, I'm going to be spending probably about an hour or so doing the detail work on these. He says flip flops, but I want to know if it's actually flop flops. And in South Africa, <laughs> it could be slip slips or slop slops. Yes, I like it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Be nice. On track. <laughs> Oh, uh, what was I doing? Okay, so yeah, I'm going to wait on doing the, the final detail and finishing on these until I have them both because I'm going to be spending a, a couple hours doing some details so that they're nice and ready for his car. Um, but for a finish on this, I'm actually going to be using a gloss um, uh, varnish. And so this is actually a boat varnish, a marine varnish. Um, and so this is designed for being in the weather on seawater and things of that nature. And so five coats of this will do fairly well. And now if you want to see how I, how I actually finished this, I did the... Uh, flower box last week uh, where I coated that. And the nice thing about this particular stuff from Total Boat is that it goes on very thin and it dries out really nicely. And you can build up the, the layers in really thin, nice, clean layers so you get a beautifully smooth surface. So you can put this on coat after coat and put it on an hour later. It dries off very quickly and you don't have to sand in between coats. And it comes with a really nice gloss, gloss sheen, which looks good on a car. Um, not everyone likes the gloss sheen as... Um, you know, woodworkers kind of like that matte finish. Um, but when it comes to marine varnishes, uh, they all come with a gloss. Um, now, Epiphanes makes a, a deglosser. It's actually another coat that you put on afterwards, and it mats it out, and so it gives it no longer being gloss, but quite almost flat. Um, but that's a, um, it's a separate piece that you put on over the gloss finish. I'm just imagining what your head would look like if you put it on. <laughs> <laughs> Now uh, there's a video. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's that's about it for for making these. It's not that big of a deal. It's just step by step. And when you put it in, um, actually, let me do a, a finished coat on, or a, um, a, a, a what's the word I'm looking for? 
There we go. Denatured alcohol. Not alcohol. Not alcohol. I want uh, the other one. There we go. Mineral spirits. And this way you can actually see what it will look like when it's finished. <laughs> what? Not that drink. This one. The other two bottles look very similar. So here, I want to show you what this looks like when I put on a coat of it. And the, the nice thing about varnish is if the epoxy isn't perfect, um, and you know, it, it has a little bit of defect in it, the epoxy kind of fills the, the, not the epoxy, the varnish fills it in and you get a really nice finish on it. Let me show you what this looks like when we apply some uh, mineral spirits. Low odor, not no odor, just low odor. Which is still pretty odorous. So let's apply a little bit of this. And you can see how this will come out and the metallic sheen of that red pops out. And so that's what they will look like. Just a little bit more gloss than that. So yeah, I think that'll come out nicely. I hope you like that on your car. Very nice. I don't know where on the car this is going. <laughs> uh, right on the hood and then on the right on the hood and the trunk. And, center, and back and center. So that gives you a little idea of how it will look. And that's just with the card scraper and then putting the, the uh, mineral spirits on there, it comes out. So, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And if you want to see these completely done, I will have pictures on them on um, Instagram and probably the, the Facebook as well. So uh, once I actually get them completed, they'll be out. Though it'll probably be a couple days because I'm going to be shooting most of the video footage tomorrow. So, yeah, I'm going to fiddle on this for a little bit. So if anyone has any questions, you can do the rest of this in question and answer. Or if you have anything for uh, Brandon, um, he can answer those as well. So what do we got, babe? Uh, let's see. Buckeye Storms asked, just did a search in wood by right brass inlay. Didn't see any results. I've been trying brass fire inlay to wood and wonder if you've ever done that. <coughs> yes, actually I have. Uh, well, not quite like that. I did a brass inlaid track on this um, um, panel gauge. There's the word. Wow, I'm having fun with names today. Let me show you what this looks like. Uh, now, this is just a simple strip running along here. Show look in the wild. <laughs> um, but this, I just cut in a groove all the way along there. So I used a saw, and I cut one side of it, and then I came down with the saw, and I cut the other side, and I put this that's a, a, a wire in here, round wire, and epoxied it in place. And then I came into a plane, and I planed it down. Uh, yes, you can plane brass and aluminum. Uh, you just have to take it very careful and do light shaving after light shaving. Um, it will dull out your blade fairly quickly, but uh, I planed it down nice and flat because originally it was rounded. Um, so that is one piece of brass inlay I've done here. Let me show you on the end. You can actually see the round here. Get that down a little lower. Focus. Focus, focus. There we go. You can see how it was round, and then I flattened it out. I hope you can see that. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to do this upside down. So, um, uh, yeah, I haven't done much other than that uh, because I haven't had much of a chance. But the nice thing about brass is you can clean it up with a plane. Um, and you just have to be very, very slow with it. Um, but, uh, yeah. What else you got? Um, Moonwolf71 has a very valid question. Who won the card scraper last week? Oh, shoot. <laughs> Let me do a quick measurement here. Wait, did um, we decide who won the bib one? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we sent that out. Oh, y'all don't get to know. He just sent it out. Oh, who won the bib? Yeah, yeah we know. We, we, we pulled that number name up. We know it. I counted the number. I never. Oh, uh, no, we didn't. I, I, I messaged them and got a hold of them. I just didn't. Uh, well, congratulations. Uh, I don't remember are. who it was. So uh, let me get the measurements on this thing because we hit the cable. And we have to go back and look at that. Oh, yeah, we were measuring this straight. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm going to have to do that next week. So that'll be next week. Um, sorry, I completely forgot about it. Today was a little bit of a, a mad. Well, next week's going to be a madhouse. Speaking of which, next week, um, I don't know what we're going to be doing for it. So stay tuned. Uh, but then the week after that, Sarah takes over. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's going to want to watch that one. Uh, the week after next, we're actually going to be doing a live Q and A from London, and so we'll probably find some interesting place to do that from. 
and uh, my wife and I will be doing that there. So stay tuned for that one. What other questions we got? Um, hang on, there was just one. Oh, Moon Wolf wanted to know what did you plant in the flower box? Um, nothing yet. I haven't actually hung it up yet. Um, we will see if I do that. If I if I do, it'll be um, um, what's the word I'm looking for, babe? They're um, seasonings. Oh, herbs. Herbs. There we are. I like herb. Herb is a good friend of mine. Okay, what else we got? Um, uh, do Jesse Rogers asked, are you going to build a wardrobe to go with the bed you made? Um, no, I'm not going to make a wardrobe. Um, I did make a tin drawer dresser, so a buffet-style dresser. Um, and that was... Two years ago, that video came out, and I have a whole series on detailing that build. So if you look up Wood by Right Dresser, you'll come across that. Um, but yeah, that was that's fun. So my bed is actually matching that style. Um, so whatever I made for the dresser is how the bed is going to be made. Your bed? What? Your bed? My wife's bed. Or our bed. The thing I've been telling her I'm going to make for, what, seven, eight years? I'm planning on making it in Watertown and never got to it. I don't know what was wrong there. <laughs> cool. I think that's about round. And then we can start working on the, the detailing and shaping it a little bit. So I really like these things. They're kind of cute. I like that logo. So thank you, Brandon. You're very welcome. Uh, before you said, so we got a few time for a few more. Okay. So I guess I have to ask the question, what kind of a vehicle are they going on? Yeah. Why don't you answer that one? You, why don't you okay, yeah. I'll make, I'll make him. They don't want to see you anyways. <laughs> so, so the uh these are going to be going on a 2001 bmw 330ci which is um a bit of, it's a it's um it's been our project car on the channel for the last two or three years um so it's it's going to be going on that i'm going to be showing it this summer taking it Kind of different locations around the states it's going to be doing a little bit of racing and then after that they'll be going on a mazda miata and the reason why they're not staying on the bmw was because um last week i was working on it getting it prepped for the season and i jacked the car up and because i live in canada and there's just a ton of rust the frame of the car actually just bent around the jack um, and the car came back down to the ground so <laughs> we just didn't hear any of this <laughs> because the car is not We're looking forward to going back money, and watching this later. Um, <laughs> it's not worth like boxing and cutting the frame and, and rebuilding it. If it was a million dollar car, then yes, you could take it down to the frame and restore it. But um, yeah, so we'll see. the The life of the BMW's future we is 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 a, I don't know what's going to happen to it. Um, so we'll see. But these are going to be going on the BMW. I'm still going to be driving it for the summer um, and, and taking it to different races and events. And then um, uh, I have a Miata that it will be going on um, after that. Fair. So. BMW, then Miata. Cool. Yeah, that's a short answer. Oh, I've got something else I want to show you guys. <laughs> um, this, is, this is the fun part. We're actually going to be working with some fire okay, here. Back on. And... Uh, one of the interesting things about epoxy, particularly with the, um, the uh, West system, is that they get all these bubbles on top. And so it's fun to come back in later and pop them once I get this in focus. And so I'll just come in with a torch. When I run the heat over them, all the bubbles suddenly pop. Oh, wow. and I'll get a nice clean surface on top. And we'll let it sit for about five, ten minutes or so, and then come back and hit with the torch. Now, some people use those little bro, um, bro paint, bro paint, um, butane. There's the word. <laughs> bro paint. Bro paint. Those are uh, those are uh, when you That's have a different thing. With friends. <laughs> <laughs> yes, bro paint. <laughs> cool. What other questions we got? Uh, that's what you asked. So how do you guys deal with chips and shaving? Chips and shaving. <laughs> well, I think about shavings, but 
Oh, as in like they're actually, yeah, that is, um, that's no, actually yes, a question too. that a lot of, a lot of new woodworkers ask because the shavings are so cool and the curls are beautiful and you just want to save them. You want to do something with them. Um, and so at first you're like, Ooh, I'm going to put them in all the planters around the house. And then I'm going to put a post on Facebook and see if anyone wants them. And <laughs> then I'm going to do something else with them. And you end up with like garbage bags of them and you don't know what to do with them because you can't throw them out. They're so beautiful. In the end, I end up composting them in the backyard. Um, most of the time, if I don't go in the compost, then they go in the trash. Um, so that's what I do with my shavings. Um, really Campfire? Isn't... Yeah, they're, they're good for fire starter, but you can only use so much of it. Most all of the uses for shavings, you only end up using a few of them, uh, such as like Christmas ornaments and things like that. They just don't, uh, uh, they, there aren't a whole lot of uses for them. So, yeah. <laughs> um, don't feel bad about throwing them out and composting them because you end up making far more shavings than you can use. What else? Uh, let's see. Brad's workbench asks, what's your latest antique tool find? Uh, where did it just go? I just purchased something recently. Not the meat right here in Love's Park. Well, there was meat. I was trying to think of there's something else that I purchased. Um, but I did purchase. Oh, okay. well, I, I just went to the meat here locally. And I just purchased. Well, I purchased a bunch of things. One of the things that I'm most happy about is this corner chisel that is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and this, this is a, a for timber framing and yeah, let me show you this focus on this so this thing is beautifully sharpened in fantastic condition I mean, just absolutely gorgeous um, so yeah I'm gonna be doing some timber framing here soon probably in a month or two and this will be in use as well as a slick and we're gonna be actually timber framing a mailbox so I think this is my this is the last thing I purchased at that meet. It even came with this leather sheath for it. So it's kind of a really happy dirt cheap price for what I was expecting. So yeah. All right. Uh, uh, oh, before I forget, um, if you want to go over to um, Octane Monkey's channel and uh, f subscribe to him, he'll have a video coming out soon of installing these. So you actually get to see them go on the car and see them in another channel. So once I get them done, I'll ship them out to him and you can actually see them there. So yeah, follow him and you'll be able to see them a second time. All right, what's next? Um, Kevin Lerma has an unrelated question. When flattening a hand plane for use, do you sand the bottom till it's completely patina free or do you leave a bit? I have a tiny bit by the center of the mouth that won't go away. Um, if it, it depends on the plane. If it is going to be a rough plane, like a number five or number six, then I don't worry about it too much. Um, flatness of the sole is its really not that much of an issue. And if there's a little bit by the mouth, oh well, it's not the last plane to touch it. If it's a jointing plane or if it's a smoothing plane and it will possibly be the last tool to touch the wood, then I'm going to get very picky about it and I want it to be very flat by the mouth, at the heel and toe. If it's not perfectly flat in the middle of the sole somewhere, oh well, I don't care about that. But it needs to be perfectly flat, particularly around the front of the mouth, the heel and the toe. The back of the mouth, it don't, doesn't matter as much. Um, but right along the front of the mouth, it really matters there. So I'm, I'm, I'm very, very picky about making sure I get smoothing planes all the way down there and jointing planes all the way down there. Um, but anywhere in the middle of the sole, not that much. So, yeah, I, I, will, I will go until the mouth, the heel, and the toe are right. So I hope that answers your question. But as with everything, everyone's going to have a different voice. You talk to some people and they'll get picky and say the entire thing, heel the toe and back and forth and up and down, it's going to be within a ten thousandth of an inch and perfectly flat, and which I say that's kind of dumb. But some people really hold that. So. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're fine. Wood Creations asked, not sure if you already answered this, but how long before you would have to reapply finish to the emblem or how often would you need to maintain it? Um, that's actually a really good question. If, um, if it's outside in the sun all the time, then with, with, with a, with a good marine varnish, you're probably going to get, uh, probably four to five years without it having any problem at all. And then somewhere between four and five years and like 
seven to eight years, you'll start to notice that it's wearing out a little bit or it's looking a little fuzzy. And then after like eight to 10 years, then you'll notice that there's a lot of cracking in it. Um, for, for a good marine finish, that that's pretty normal. Um, the nice thing about it is all you have to do is hit it with another coat of varnish every so often, every, you know, every four or five years, and it brings it back to life. Um, so, yeah. Um, also, I, what I've also done in the past is uh, boil linseed oil, actually, is a, is a good um, rejuvenator. It brings the, the texture back to it. Not perfect, but it works. You ready for another one? Yeah. All right, Samwise asks, could you use a hammer and file on the, that brass instead of a plane? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, a file will cut through it very quickly, pretty easily. And then Brad's Workbench asked, ever use fiberglass resin as a cheap form of epoxy? Um, well, fiberglass resin is an epoxy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, when I, I built a four-seat aircraft using West System epoxy, and so this was the resin I used to... Uh, um, to cure the fiberglass in. So unless I'm reading something wrong from your question, I hope that answered it. <laughs> we have quite the discussion going on right now about shavings and animals <laughs> and bedding. <laughs> yeah, if you if you know someone over here, I'm just if you know say. someone who needs animal bedding, that is that is top notch stuff. Um, but gerbils only go through so much. Okay. I'm not sure how I feel about Alan Smith right now because he's just said cats rule. But oh, before we go on, uh, Tim Cheatwood asked the question recently, um, and you've got to check out his channel. He just put up, uh, he just started a new channel. He's a good friend of mine, and we actually hung out at uh, the Midwest Tool Collectors Meet in uh, in Georgia. Um, so yeah, definitely you know, click on his logo in the in the chat. Tim Cheatwood, uh, Cheatwood Creations, and he's got some cool stuff. Sorry. What's You're that? not. Interrupting cow. <laughs> I'm stealing this $5 from Buckeye Storms. Okay, I think we got enough. Oh, Buckeye Storms, you are fantastic. Let's, let's do one more, and then we'll do another question after this. Uh, uh, yeah, I see smoke. I, I see smoke. Wow, this is the... Okay. So... A vowel saves another vowel's life. And the vowel says to the other vowel, I, e, I owe you. <laughs> you just butchered <laughs> that. So. Okay, I'll make you do it more. Did I tell you the time I fell in love during a backflip? I was head over heels. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> so thank you, uh, Buckeye Storms. Uh, so what's the last question? I think we got time for one more. I don't know, because the one I was going to say was from Alex. He wanted to know if you still talk as lovingly about me as you do your hand tools, but I'm not sure that you have. <laughs> I always talk about you more lovingly with my hand tools. I never talk about having to flatten you. I have to flatten all my hand tools. Yeah, you don't have to. I uh, would sort of soften my rough edges or anything. <laughs> um, let's see. I uh, never have to sharpen you. You're always just as keen as can be. Uh -huh. One last question. WB Fine Woodworking said, where is the Stanley number one? <laughs> I so wanted to buy that one. The last meet I was at had a Stanley number one. Um, it had a, a broken tote and there was a nick out of the, the front, um, but he was selling it for 500 bucks which um, is, if you know Stanley number ones, that is a phenomenal price. Um, usually $800 is a good price. 500, 900 is normal. 1,000 isn't uncommon. Um, and it's a useless plane. There really isn't a use for it in the wood shop, but it's the, it's the Stanley number one. So you've got to it. One of these days, one of these days I'm going to get a Stanley number one. I'm going to have a shrine up, but I just didn't buy that one. Still kicking myself, but uh, yeah. I didn't buy the Stanley number one. That would have made a good video. <laughs> so I think that's about it for tonight. Um, if I didn't get to your question, uh, feel free to send me a, a uh, email. You can see the contact page of my website, woodbyright.com. I do want to say a huge thank you to Octane Monkey. 
And uh, coming on for this, I hope you like the emblems when they get out to you. Go ahead and subscribe to his channel and uh, see when they go on to his car. Now I have to see what my wife is laughing about. Nothing. Nothing? Okay, Nothing. I'll go back and read the comments later. <laughs> so I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day.